Hello boys and girls, nice to see you again. Well today I'm going to read a story about a little girl who lived more than 200 years ago. Her name was Mary and she was one of the first scientists who knew about dinosaurs. But then people didn't really know much about dinosaurs. It's called The Fossil Girl and here she is, Mary Anning, and it's about her dinosaur discovery. The story is by Catherine Brighton and she drew all these wonderful pictures as well. Let's have a look inside. Oh look, here are some fossils. But when Mary was collecting them, she called them curiosities because they didn't know what a fossil was. The Fossil Girl. Mary Anning's Dinosaur Discovery. Okay. Lyme Regis, Dorset, 1810. So Lyme Regis is a small town on the coast, on the south coast of England. Mary and Jo Anning went out in all weathers to collect curiosities to sell in their shop. After their father died, they helped their mother keep the shop going. Look, here she is next to the sea. Joe, come and look at this. I'm coming. <gasps> look, that's big, he said. It's worth at least five shillings. Mama will be pleased. Mama, look what I've got. Hurry, there's a storm coming. At home. Is it worth five shillings, Mama? Yes, Mary, you write the label. Before Mary went to bed, she watched the storm from the safety of the shop window. And then suddenly, in the middle of the night, a huge wave burst through the windows, flooding the Anning's house. Oh dear. All the curiosities were swept away. Don't worry, Mama. Joe and I will soon find more curiosities. We'll start tomorrow. Mr Arkwright from up the hill came to repair the damage. Then Mary and Joe set out to find some new curiosities. Mm -hmm. There they go, walking next to the cliff here. Look what I found, Joe. No, Mary, come and look at this. So don't forget, this is after the storm. And the storm has washed away some of the rocks. It must be the biggest curiosity we've ever seen. If the face is this big, the body must be... 20 feet long. Am I dreaming? It's so long. She'd never seen anything like it. Later, Mary got down her book, Strange Creatures of the World. Is it a giraffe? A gorilla? A crocodile? In England? Could it be a crocodile, Mama? But Mary's mother didn't know. That night, Mary lay awake, thinking of a way to get her crocodile down the cliff and into the shop. The next morning, she spoke to Joe. I've got an idea. I wonder if Mr Arkwright would build me a tower. You're mad. Mary picked some flowers for Mr Arkwright and asked him if he would build her a tower up the cliff. He was so intrigued, he said yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr Arkwright. And here's the tower being built. Lots of people watching. If God wanted you to find curiosities, Mary Anning, why did he bury them? Well, some people thought like that 200 years ago. It's a crocodile in England. Is Mary really going up there? She's brave. 
or stupid. Ruff, said the dog. When the tower was ready, Mary climbed up the rickety ladder. The platform swayed under her. It was a long way down. Or, well, she has to be brave. Then she turned to face the creature. And she worked with her hammer and tools so that you could see the whole creature. You could see its flippers, you could see the fossil bones. And she cut pieces out of the rock and lowered them on a rope. Mary lowered all the pieces down into Mr. Arkwright's cart and took one last look at the hole where the curiosity had been buried all those years. Well done, Mary, bravo. When can we see the crocodile? Then, as the cart pulled away across the beach, there was a sudden crack and the tower collapsed like a pack of cards. Well, that was lucky. Mary was standing on that tower. Back in the shop, Mary examined the curiosity. A nostril. So, did you breathe and spout? When dawn came, Mary was asleep beside her creature. While outside, a very long queue was forming. Mary and Joe charged each person a penny to see the curiosity. Now they could afford their first hot meal for months. Just when Mary and Joel thought the last sightseer had gone, a figure appeared at the door. It was Henry Henley, Lord of the Manor. He was very interested to see the curiosity and told them that the creature was not a crocodile. These are the fossilised remains of what scientists call an ichthyosaur. It lived in the sea millions of years ago. You've made a very important discovery. Mary and Joe could hardly believe what he had told them. So the world is millions of years old, Joe, not thousands. And the creature has been in the cliff all that time. The next day, there's someone talking to the children. I'd like to buy your fossil. Would you accept 20 pounds? If you please, sir, we'd like 23. Yes, 23 pounds. It's the best one we've ever found. So Henry Henley bought the fossil for 23 pounds and made arrangements to transport it up to London. Perhaps it's in these boxes here. Fossils, so that's what they're called. One day, I'm going to be a famous fossil hunter. Come on then, let's get started, said Joe. And here's a painting of Mary Anning. She did become famous. After finding the ichthyosaur, she went on to make many more important finds. Two complete plesiosaurs and the first pterodactyl ever found in Britain. Even though she never went to school and never left Lyme Regis, she made an international expert and an international reputation as a fossil expert. Even though she never went to school and never left Lyme Regis, she made a, an international reputation as a fossil expert. And she died in 1847 at the age of 48. Mary lived at a time when scientists were working on a new idea that the world was much older than they had always thought. This shocked some people as it seemed to contradict what was written in the Bible. 
Mary's discoveries helped provide the evidence that the scientists needed to back up their new ideas. In 1859, 12 years after Mary died, Charles Darwin's book, The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, was published. His theory of evolution sparked off a revolution in religious and scientific thought, and its effects are still felt to this day. Without Mary Anning and her fossils, the history of science might have been very different. Here are some other books we might read another time. That's the back cover showing some of Lyme Regis and that's the back and front cover. And there's Mary as a girl, the fossil girl. Well, a super story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. See you soon. Bye bye.